Hey folks, how's it going today? Will here with Saberoon Design Tutorial Blog, welcoming you to the very first episode of our Photoshop Desk Reference series. The series is going to be a little bit different from the tutorials that we usually do. Typically, our tutorials, and most other tutorials that are available, focus on design techniques and projects. The Desk Reference series is instead going to focus specifically on the Photoshop user interface and the tools contained therein. The goal of this series is not to teach you how to use Photoshop as a whole, but rather to break Photoshop down into its individual parts and become familiar with those parts on a case-by-case -case basis. The Desk Reference series won't be replacing our standard tutorials. Instead, it's designed to complement the other tutorials that you're used to seeing here. If things work out like I hope they will, the Desk Reference series will enhance your understanding of the techniques and projects that you are shown in our other tutorials. Let's get our first desk reference tutorial started. The focus of today's tutorial will be the HUD color picker. Everyone knows what the color picker is. It's one of the first things you learn when you first dive into Photoshop or any other graphic editing software for that matter. Typically we bring up the color picker by clicking on the foreground or the background swatch in the toolbar. There are a few ways you can change the swatch color. You can use the color picker to select the color of your choice first by clicking on the hue strip and then clicking on the brightness pane or you can click on one of the presets in the swatch panel or you can use the color panel which is basically just a condensed version of the color picker with the added functionality of being able to toggle between the foreground and the background. There are other ways of course but those are the three most common. What you may not know of is a thing called the HUD color picker. If you don't already know, HUD or HUD stands for Heads Up Display. Basically what that means is information that is normally contained in a separate panel is temporarily superimposed directly on to the viewing area, then dismissed once it's no longer needed. The HUD picker comes in two variations. One variation is simply an enhanced version of the eyedropper tool. To use the HUD eyedropper, simply hold down the ALT key and left click and hold anywhere on the canvas. In addition to the eyedropper icon, you'll also see a large ring. The color at the bottom half of the ring represents the current foreground color. The color at the top half of the ring represents the color that the eyedropper is currently sampling. If we move the cursor around, we see that the top color changes based on the location of the eyedropper. To change the foreground color, simply release your left click once you're happy with the color of the top half of the ring. The split ring design gives you a comprehensive side-by-side -side comparison of the old color versus the new color. Having this feature incorporated into the HUD allows you to quickly change colors on the fly, all without changing tools in the toolbar. It should be noted, the HUD eyedropper doesn't work with every tool. It won't work with the Move tool and the Marquee tools. However, it does work with all tools where sampling colors continuously would be desirable, such as a paintbrush, gradient tool, and the paint bucket tool. If you are using a tool that the HUD eyedropper will work with, the icon will change to the eyedropper icon when you hit the Alt key. If the foreground color you want does not exist on the canvas, you can summon the more robust HUD picker. To bring up the HUD picker, hold down the ALT plus SHIFT and take a quick look at the cursor. It transforms into the eyedropper icon just like before, but this time the icon includes a little plus sign letting you know that you're about to summon the enhanced version of the picker. While holding ALT and SHIFT, right click and hold to bring up the HUD picker. Once the HUD picker appears, you can release ALT and SHIFT. The picker will remain on screen as long as you hold down right click. To manipulate the picker, simply move your cursor over the areas that you want to affect. Slide your cursor up and down the sidebar to choose your hue, then without releasing right click, move the cursor to the larger area to set the brightness and saturation. Notice how as you move your cursor around the square area, the stroke around the bar changes to reflect the brightness and saturation you've selected. Once you're happy with your selection, simply release the right click your foreground is set to the desired color and the HUD picker is dismissed, all without having to change tools. Once again, the ability to use the HUD picker is limited similarly to the HUD eyedropper. It can only be called while using certain tools. If you don't like the look of the HUD picker, it can be customized. Press Ctrl K to bring up the preference panel. 
Under the General tab of the Preferences panel, at the top of the screen you will see a field labeled HUD Color Picker. If you expand to the drop-down menu, you'll see several options. By default, the HUD Picker is set to Hue Strip Small. In the menu, you'll see Hue Strip Medium and Hue Strip Large, which are simply larger versions of what we've already seen. In addition to those, you see Hue Wheel, and a small, medium, and large version of that as well. The Hue Wheel does the exact same job, but has a slightly different look to it. Instead of a bar on the side, the Hue Strip wraps completely around the saturation pane, giving you a larger area which allows for slightly more precision when choosing a hue. Just like the Hue Strip, the stroke around the wheel reflects the brightness and saturation you choose in the square area in the center. Just as before, when you're happy with your selection, release your left click and your foreground is set and the picker is dismissed. And that's going to do it for our first episode of the Desk Reference Series. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and remember to visit www.saberoon.com for more Photoshop tutorials. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.